Hello everybody and welcome back to a lecture series. I'm Ted, your host, and for this lecture we are going to examine uh, China. We're going to examine China um, and we haven't really looked at China since the Han. Um, but before we get into our, our uh, lecture proper on China, and we're going to look at China um, under the Tang Dynasty. Um, but before we begin that uh, that lecture, I just like to do our brief recap on our last lecture. In our last lecture, we looked at the uh, that the dynamics in Southeast Asia, and uh, and what is really now um, uh, still kind of archaically referred to as the Indochine. That is the um, that peninsula or the series of peninsulas in Southeast Asia um, that uh, that meet at the juncture where. Um, Indian civilization and Chinese civilization sort of uh, converge in that intermediary border zone, um, which is home to the uh, the modern day states of Vietnam, Cambodia, and Thailand, um, and also Laos, um, and, and that area. We looked at the development of the Khmer civilization um, and also the, uh, the the Khmer Empire to a large extent. We examined some of the uh, larger known, some of the better known rulers, Chai Varma II, Surya Varma uh, II. We looked at the um, the motivations for the development of Angkor Wat and Angkor Thom. Uh, we we noted that the um, that those areas, uh, while impressive and and very much um, uh, treasured artifacts, so to speak, for historians that we seek to understand more about human civilization and also as we seek to understand more about human development, uh, they, they put a very heavy burden on the uh, on the people's there. It took an enormous amount of effort uh, and mobilization of resources to construct and uh, to continue uh, the habitation in those zones. Um, we, we noted that uh, the the Khmer state um, uh, they they were able to uh, parlay the uh, the the Hindu influences uh, uh, stemming from Indian civilization. They were able to uh, to to meld those to uh, to add those to the uh, the indigenous understanding of governance and to create or to foster this image uh, of divine kingship and this then that this divine kingship sat at the center of the um, of the development of Khmer civilization and that when the divine kingship was challenged by new ideas by a new religious philosophy um, namely Buddhism uh, it it uh, has new schools of Buddhism uh, drifted into the Khmer state, drifted into um, what is now the Indochine, it sort of undermined the earlier um, established notions of divine kingship, which uh, helped to fragment, helped to erode the authority of the divine king. Uh, military defeat at the high at the hands of uh, the Thai uh, Thai armies also helped to. Um, undermine the authority of the kings and then of course the uh the fact that the world had changed uh the Khmer state rose um uh around the same time that uh that islam that islamic civilization was uh was thriving in the uh in the west um and has those uh those influences spread eastward they took possession of the trade routes and they simply rerouted the trade routes and, and placed them Firmly into a, a more regulated Islamic um, trade trade network, um, and this, of course, excluded those uh, who did not practice Islam. Um, as noted earlier, uh, cities such as uh, Aksum fell uh, fell from grace because of the loss of the trade routes. Ba um, Baghdad supplanted Babylon uh, because Babylon lost access to those trade routes, um, and uh, and the uh, the port cities of of the uh, of the Khmer state, the poor cities that had supported um, and had really been uh, the great rep uh, uh, repositories of trade goods, uh, the great conducive centers for Chinese uh, slash Indian um, and Mediterranean world trade. Um, those trade routes were taken away, and without those trade routes, the uh, the region became increasingly unstable, and the region was always uh, volatile. Um, it was always a, a one-upmanship uh, based on the, the personal characteristics, the personal qualities of the divine king, and the fact that the uh, 
the, uh, the intellectual argument for the divine king were being challenged, the loss of the trade routes, military defeat, um, all of those converged along with the unstable nature of the region to, uh, un to, uh, to lead about, uh, to bring about the undoing of the Khmer state. Uh, and the region simply fractures, the, the Khmer empire simply fractures into, uh, competing states once again. Um, now, uh, now to turn our attention to China, and as stated earlier, we last visited China during the collapse uh, of the Chinese Empire. After the collapse of Han China, um, uh, China in general dissolved into a number of warring states. Uh, and some of these states were controlled by what we would call non-Chinese people. Now, this period, uh, the period that followed the collapse of the Han, constitutes the longest period of disunity in Chinese history. It lasted from 229 to 589. And this turbulent period is known as the era of the Three Kingdoms and Six Dynasties. Now, there were many more than six dynasties, but the changeover was so sudden and so rapid uh, and so prominent during this period that they were not all recorded. Um, this was a period of intense internal discord and a frequent external attacks. Uh, and these external attacks were perpetrated by nomadic groups who were pressing in from the Central Asian plains. Uh, bandits proliferated uh, during this time and they robbed travelers or they raided rural villages. Um, after the fall of the Han, China divided into northern and southern spheres. Uh, again, um, hinting at that 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 long um, that that long uh, accustomed tradition, I guess, of the uh, internal division of China. Now, has coalitions of states based around the Yangtze and the Yellow prol proliferated? Uh, this split nearly became permanent, and again, this is due to the political fragmentation, but also to the geographic and the cultural differences between the two regions. Um, and, and and this split is really um, is really uh, can really be made in a comparison with the split between the Eastern and the Western. Roman empires, but unlike the Roman Empire, Imperial China was eventually reunified in an event that still resonates in the modern world. Uh, because has, um, as we look at a map, if China had divided during that uh, that that north south um, axiom, then we would have. Um, well, we we kind of do have two Chinas, but we would have two large um, Chinese states on the mainland of East Asia. Um, whereas uh, we can still sort of look at the uh, the cultural uh, division between the Eastern and the Western Roman Empire. Um, one uh, based in Western and Central Europe, and then the other in uh, the, the Eastern shores of the Mediterranean. Um, along with some outlying uh, pro provincial areas. Now, uh, this period, uh, this period, the period of the Three Kingdoms, um, it has, has become the setting for many great works of Chinese literature, um, the romance of the Three Kingdoms, and the epic poem, The Ballad, uh, or The Ballad of Fa Mulan. Uh, and and, and uh, Mulan tells the story of a young woman named Fa Mulan, who joins the Imperial Army to fight off invading nomads uh, in the place of her elderly father. Now, um, the romance of the Three Kingdoms uh, has spawned countless Chinese language television series and movies. Um, the more notable uh, would be uh, the movie Red Cliffs, which, it, which was a, a very recent and a very successful movie. Now, while we can appreciate these literary and cinematic works derived from this period, for the people in China, everyday life was very dangerous during the, the period of the Three Kingdoms and Six Dynasties. They were threatened by rival expiring emperors, um, they were threatened by the bandits, and of course by nomadic invaders, all of whom were out for plunder. Uh, the frequent wars and disease took a massive toll on the Chinese population. Uh, the time also spawned new philosophies. Confucianism, which had blossomed and flourished earlier under the Han, was not well suited for the turbulence of the Three Kingdoms. Buddhism is attested as having reached China in the first century, and it remained on the periphery until central order broke down in China. Now, Buddhism spread rapidly among the poor and the disempowered classes who were looking for comfort. 
uh, Buddhist monasteries were repositories of calm in a very chaotic time. Now, Chinese Buddhism is very different from Indian Buddhism, namely in that in China, reincarnation was downplayed uh, due to the long-standing practice of ancestor worship. Now, the highly ordered society of Confucianism had fallen apart, so many people decided that to, do, to simply do whatever they please. Uh, they indulged in wine and music, and, and, and this, uh, this school of thought, this ideology, is best exemplified by the seven sages of the bamboo grove. Uh, the Chinese also embraced Taoism at this time, um, and, and they embraced it in a new form called Neo-Taoism. And over the following centuries, a gradual conversion uh, to Buddhism, uh, a, a gradual conversion of, uh, of Buddhist practices and ideas, Taoist practices, ideas, and of course Confucian practices and ideas will take place within China. Now, toward the end of the 6th century in China, a family of tough, pragmatic emperors of a military background came to power. They stabilized the borders of China, uh, they drove out the nomads, and they stabilized the Chinese empire. These men founded the Sui uh, dynasty. Uh, and this dynasty only lasted for about three generations. About, uh, and and these genera this generation, on, um, these three generations only lasted about uh, 30 years, from 589 to 618. But they laid the foundation for a remarkable rebirth of Chinese civilization. And this rebirth would take place under the Tang Dynasty. Now, the Sui were not popular rulers. Uh, they were not known for their kindness. Uh, but after the type of chaos... Um, uh, but after the chaos that had gripped China for nearly three centuries, they were exactly the type of tough, pragmatic regime, the tough, pragmatic emperors that were needed to reunify China. Uh, they raised taxes, and they openly exploited the peasantry. Now, the Sui were large-scale builders, and they were supporters of the arts. They constructed libraries. Um, they, they constructed some of the more remarkable libraries um, at, at, uh, for the world at this time. Uh, they constructed Buddhist temples, they expanded the network of roads, they rebuilt segments of the Great Wall, um, and they, they did this using forced labor, uh, and their forced labor came from the Chinese peasants. Um, they, they excavated new cana uh, canals, and they completed the first version of the Grand Canal. Um, the Grand Canal being the, uh, the Great Canal within China that connects the Yellow and the Yangtze River. Um, the canal was lined with parks and shade trees and a lot of inns, and this was done to facilitate travelers to make traveling easy. Uh, they wanted to bridge the two great zones of China. Now, the Sui built bridges, uh, and, and these bridges uh, spanned the canals. They, they built bridges, bridges over the canals, and some of these Sui bridges, they still survive into modern times. Now, the Sui dynasty uh, was also very organized. They were organized and they were warlike, and they employed a large-scale, sophisticated imperial army that was built for conquest. Uh, the Sui overextended itself, however, when they pushed into Korea and into Central Asia. Um, the people there rebelled, and in the face of, of this overwork and food shortages um, that, that plagued China, uh, the Sui fell. Now, after a brief civil war, one of the Sui uh, generals emerged as emperor, Li Wan. Um, and, and, uh, and Li Wan, if you remember, had the emperor Gao, uh, Gao Zhu. Um, who, and, he's the, and he was the founder of the Tang Dynasty. Now, he was not from a noble Chinese family. He was from the frontier. Uh, his dynasty lasted for three centuries, from roughly uh, 618 to 907. Now, the Tang or, or the Tang revived the Confucian idea of the benevolent ruler in order to balance authority and openness. Now, the emperor was seen as a son of heaven, who was an absolute uh, ruler. He had an absolute mandate to rule, and he was also seen as a father. Um, uh, and and uh, being such, uh, being an absolute ruler uh, with, this ab with this mandate to rule from heaven, uh, and being had the father, he was responsible for the well-being of all of his subjects. Now, the three centuries of Tang rule uh, rank very high in, in Chinese society. In Chinese historians, um, they, they have very high opinions of the of the Tang Dynasty. Um, and, and really, uh, the Tang Dynasty and Tang China serve as a political and a cultural model for 
East Asia. Uh, it, it still does sort of have the, the base model for for for, good, for uh, the best example of governance in East Asia. Now, the word for Chinese and Cantonese means people of the tongue. Uh, Chinatowns, uh, places where Chinese immigrants emigrated to um, uh, during the 19th century, uh, they're known all over the world. They're all known as Tong people streets. Now, the Tong eventually spread into Turkish Central Asia. Uh, they reached as far as Tibet and northern Vietnam. Now, Li Ximin, um, the the son of Li Wan, he stayed to coup in 626 and in this coup he killed his brothers and he threw his father in prison before assuming the imperial authority for himself as the emperor Taizong um, and he earned a reputation for uh, as a wise and a conscientious ruler in the process um, even though he had come to, uh, to power under uh, dubious circumstances. Um, Certainly, staging a coup against your family and killing your family uh, normally wouldn't would not enable somebody to have such a great reputation. But but Tai Zhang does. He rules for over twenty years and he fights off the nomads and he institutes many of the later reforms that subsequent uh, that uh, subsequent Tang rulers would benefit from. Now Gao Zhang resembled uh, his father um, in the fact that he supported education and he supported. Uh, an administration that was staffed uh, according to merit. Now, Tai Zhang had unsuccessfully attacked Korea, um, but but Gao Zhang uh, achieved his conquest, and he also revived the uh, the Tang legal code. Now, the next ruler was one of Tao Zhang's minor concubines, uh, a woman named Wu. Um, when Gao Jun succeeded, uh, he inherited Wu as a concubine from his father. Now, Wu acquired more status under Gao Jun um, and eventually became his number two wife. And when Gao suffered a stroke, her power expanded and she dominated things at court after his death. She manipulated affairs to act as regent on behalf of her own young children before uh, finally taking the throne for herself in 690. And, and she's a difficult figure to decipher because all of these surviving sources, uh, and these are all Chinese sources, they're all extremely hostile to her. The Confucian establishment did not approve of having a woman as a ruler um, and, 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 in a, and, and in an effort to secure her own position, um, uh, in an effort to secure her own position, the, the Confucian establishment, the Confucian scholars, they made the claim that she killed her own children and that she had her opponents eliminated just so that she could remain in power. Now, to counter, uh, to counteract or to counterbalance um, the social, uh, the, the the social atmosphere um, within China, to uh, to sort of um, to sort of uh, discredit and to sort of remove the power bases of her enemies, she set up an inner court of scholars. Um, which allowed her to build a power base, um, uh, and, and this power base was largely um, and, and it largely enabled her to act independently of her enemies. Uh, she also favored Buddhism, and and the decision to favor Buddhism was a, a very calculated and political one. It was a means of breaking the Confucian hold on power. Now, Empress Wu also patronized the writing of biographies of very famous women, and again, this was a very calculated political move on her part. Um, she wanted to show that uh, women could be just as major historical figures and just as major political and uh, and historical figures as men. She wanted to uh, sort of set the stage for for, um, for for justifications of herself being a ruler in China. Now, in 706, she was forced to abdicate by her enemies, and her abdication led to infighting. But in the end, she was defeated by Zhuang Zhong, um, who reigned for 41 years. Um, and, 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 and during the 41 years, wealth increases uh, to level unbefore seen in China. Towns, trade, the arts, they all flourish. Uh, Zhuang Zhang's court became famed for its culture and its very cosmopolitan nature. Now, this period is also seen as a golden age by Chinese historians. Um, and again, this, this is why they, they sort of um, look favorably upon it, uh, Tong China. Um, Many recognize it as the high period where China was marked by very high levels of cultural sophistication when technological uh, advancements were made and China uh, and, and China and Chinese power stretched far. 
Uh, this was the period where the Chinese borders and Chinese influence were never greater. Uh, toward the end of his life, um, this emperor again fell in love with one of his son's concubines, and she, her, uh, she and her family would end up running the empire, and things would deteriorate under them. Now, after uh, the mid 8th century, uh, the Tang began to go into decline. Um, at the Battle of Tala near Samarkand in 750, the Tang army was utterly defeated by an Islamic army, and uh, Uyghur Turks. Uh, took over Mongolia and Islam rose on the western border regions of the empire, a situation which lasts really up until the present. Um, and in the far western provinces of China, Islam is very much at the base, uh, the root of life there. Um, internal enemies began to menace the Tang, and, uh, and as the, the Tang power began to go on the way and military governors began to menace the Tang in their outlying provinces. And, and the Tang would continue, uh, they would continue at the imperial power, at the, interior, at the imperial ruling dynasty for another 150 years, but, um, but they did not come close again to the heights of power or culture they had um, during the earlier years of the dynasty, during the earlier century of the dynasty. In 907, the Tang dynasty ended when a general um, who was in rebellion against the throne, he sacked the capital and he seized the throne from the last Tang emperor. And for the next 50 years, China was split up again in what is known as the, the Five Dynasties, but the model for imperial stability and full Chinese unity had taken root and future dynasties would arise uh, whenever there was a, um, whenever one dynasty fell, another dynasty would quickly rise and this dynasty was set out to unite China and restore stability. Um, that concludes our, our look, our overview of Asian uh, civil civilization and state. It does not end it. This, it concludes it for the first half of our world history presentation. We will once again pick up uh, the exciting stories of uh, that 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 we've been tracking so far uh, when we uh, return um, to for the second half of the world history presentation. Um, for our next lecture, we're going to. Uh, again, move on to another part of the world that we haven't examined. Uh, this is an area. Of, this is an area of the world that we have not examined at all so far. And of course, this would be the Americas. Um, we have not, in any way, shape, or form, really looked at the Americas. But when we come back, we will begin our our, um, our overview of who the first Americans were. We will look at who the. Uh, we, we will look at the, uh, the earliest areas of development for the Americas. And of course, this would be the, uh, the areas or the regions of Mesoamerica, um, which is uh, which roughly aligns to uh, the core regions or the central regions of Central America. And of course, we will look at the development of, of uh, cultures and sedentary states in uh, southwestern, uh, southwestern South America along uh, the shores of what is now Peru. Um, as always, hit like, subscribe, and comment. And when we come back, we will continue right along. Um, earlier, when I did American history, when I did the American history presentation, I uh, did a few on the first Americans and I did, and I did a few uh, videos and I presented a few lectures on uh, the rise of um, states in, uh, in America. I don't know if I'll create new videos or if I'll simply recycle the older videos. I may just recycle the older videos. Um, but as always, hit like, subscribe, and comment. And when we come back again, we will look at um, the rise of states and peoples in the Americas.